Hi, I'm Ali. Welcome to Grunge Kitchen. This is going to be episode six and it's going to be a bit of a double whammy. We're going to be making firstly a base sauce, which you can use for loads of different um, curries, British Indian style curries. And then secondly, I'm going to be making with that base sauce a full curry, um, which will be a chicken gelfrezi. And we're going to do that in two parts. So a bit of an extra different approach there for this video. Also, uh, we're going to be talking about and looking at uh, Soundgarden Super Unknown is the album for today. And I should also take a moment to say Merry Christmas because this is being recorded on the 27th of December 2020. And for those of you who might be watching this in years to come, this was one hell of a year and I think we're all pretty relieved to be at the end of it. Um, but in any event, it's also, by coincidence, my brother's 40th birthday today. So happy birthday to him. And talking of my brother, I'm just going to share with you what he actually got me for Christmas this year, which was pretty special. I'm going to be using it for the first time today. And here's the Grunge Kitchen chopping board, which along the bottom says melon, cauliflower and infinite chopping, which is awesome punnery there from my brother who's over in the UK and happy birthday to him today. So let's get on with making this base sauce. I'll first of all explain, um, this is based on a Dan Toombs recipe. So Dan Toombs is a bit of a legend in UK Indian cookery. Um, he spent a lot of time perfecting the British Indian style um, because for those of you who don't know, British Indian food is its own kind of subset of Indian food. Uh, now I've grown up in the UK, I actually grew up in the Balt what they call the Balti Triangle around the Midlands and the West Midlands and Birmingham in particular. So there's a particular very famous style of, of cookery there around Balti cooking um, that is very British. It was created for British palates by uh, Indian and Pakistani and Bangladeshi uh, immigrants and it's well, well loved by the British people. I think chicken tikka masala was one of the dishes that was invented for this particular style of cookery. Um, and also, I would hazard a guess that most people in the UK, if you've ever met one, if you've spent any time in the UK, they will tell you that Indian food, British Indian food, is a huge part of our culture. Um, I've also been lucky enough to spend time in India um, and can say with certainty that the food there is different. It, it, I love all Indian food, but it is different to the British Indian style that, that was has created, has been curated for, for British palates. So whilst I do love traditional and authentic Indian Indian food, this is the type of Indian food that I cook at home. And Dan Toombs, who is also known as the curry guy, is the guru of, of this kind of cooking. He's spent a lot of time in British Indian restaurants and he's created these series of books. So I actually have his, this is my Bible, the curry guy. Um, and that's the main book. Then he's also done two other books. He's done an easy version and a veggie version. Um, both of these available on Amazon and the original. Um, and you can use them for all kinds of, like this, this Sri Lankan, there is um, Singaporean. There's all sorts of stuff in these books, actually more wide than just Indian based food. But they are awesome and they allow you to experiment as well. So it gives you a lot of methods that you can then take into your own um, experiments with cooking once you know what your own preferences are in terms of flavour. So those are the books that I'm going to use. The base sauce that I'm going to make in a minute is, is from the red book, but there's also recipes for that base sauce in the blue book. Um, and they're all different batch amounts. So the batch that I'm going to make today for base curry sauce um, it makes eight to ten servings. I tend to pour it into three, um, three tubs worth and then I freeze two tubs and I keep a tub out and the tub is enough to do about four curries for, for Stu and I. So it's a brilliant way of doing this batch cooking and then those base sauces can be turned into so many different things. Um, so yeah, let's get on with it. I'll walk you through the ingredients and we'll go from there. To make this base sauce, you're gonna need fresh vegetables. You're gonna need a red and green capsicum or pepper if you're in the UK. A carrot, a decent sized carrot. Um, I've got half a head of cab white cabbage. You don't need a lot of this. You maybe need like um, a chunk of it, but that's the smallest cabbage I could get. Um, you need 800 grams of onions. So that's about five or six big Spanish onions. 
um, chopped tomatoes. I, you can chop fresh tomatoes, but I, I just cheat and use a tin. Um, some rapeseed oil or canola oil that we call it in Australia. Garlic and ginger paste. Now, I sometimes I use this jarred stuff that you can get from Indian supermarkets, or you, you can actually usually get it in Coles now as well. Um, but it's just convenience that I'm using that today. I also often blend up just garlic and ginger and stick it in a nice cube tray, and I tend to have that in the freezer at all times. But for today, I'm going to use this ready-made stuff. Um, ground turmeric, ground coriander, ground cumin, ground paprika. That's a sweet paprika, not a smoked. This is garam masala. Now it's in a tub like this because I hand make and uh, blend garam masala myself. That's also something I've learned from uh, Dan Toombs' books. And ground fenugreek, which again I've freshly ground that, so hence it's in a in a homemade tub. And that is what you need for this base sauce. Okay, so this is my ingredients prepared. What we've got here is 25 grams of carrot, chopped, peeled and chopped, 25 grams of cabbage, chopped, uh, 40 grams of red capsicum or pepper, diced and deseeded, and 40 grams green pepper, diced and deseeded. So they're all there ready to go in. In here is all the um, spices that you need, which is one and a half teaspoons each of ground cumin, ground coriander, ground fen fenugreek, ground paprika, ground turmeric, and garam masala. So that's one and a half teaspoons of each of those things. They're all in there ready to go. Uh, this is 800 grams of Spanish onions, just roughly chopped. You can see they're in actually quite big pieces because it doesn't matter with the way it's going to be cooked. And here we've got 150 grams of diced tomatoes, which I've just tipped them out of a tin. Uh, it's all ready to go. And then I've got my garlic and ginger paste here. We will be putting um, three tablespoons of that in in a moment. Now, I'm going to introduce you to how we're going to cook this, which is going to be in the pressure cooker. This is my Philips All-in-One, which is an absolutely fabulous bit of kit. If you haven't got one and you cook regularly, they're well worth the uh, investment. So what I'm going to do is saute the onions in here first, and then um, we're going to use the pressure cooker function for 10 minutes, and then basically your base sauce is done. So bear with me, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's going. So I've got my Philips All-in-One set to saute at the moment and I've put five tablespoons of canola oil in the bottom of this. Just let it get hot and we're just basically going to saute these onions in the hot oil for about five minutes just as it is and then we'll come back to it. These are now nicely sauteed and they're kind of translucent and soft as you can see. So now basically the rest of the ingredients goes in plus 750 ml of water and then we're going to give it a stir. I'll show you in a second. So what I've done here is add everything except the water and giving it a good stir so you can see it's all nicely combined. And then we're going to put 750 ml of water in there. Then we're going to set it to pressure cook for 10 minutes. And then it's done. Okay, so I've just released the pressure on the pressure cooker and I'm about to open it. And, ooh, all that steam. What you've got in here now is a pressure cooked base sauce, but what we're gonna do is stick a stick blender in it and blend it until it's smooth and then let it sit until the oil gets up to the top, skim it off, and then you've got your base sauce. And this is what it looks like once it's been blended down with the stick blender. So it basically looks like a soup. It's fairly thick, but it's more like, it's like a gravy, I guess. So I skimmed a couple tablespoons of oil off the surface of this before I blended and I keep that oil. You can use it for other cooking. It's incredibly well seasoned. It's brilliant for barbecue and that kind of thing. But this I will now be putting into a couple of tubs. This usually makes three um, tubs full of about 750 ml each of sauce. So what I've got here 
is three tubs, each one full of base sauce. Um, and what I'm going to do is put two of them in the freezer. They freeze really well for up to about three months and keep one of them out to use in some curries tonight. Each one of these containers um, holds about 750 ml of sauce. You can either use it uh, neat as it is or you can dilute it. So depending on how you use it, you'll get between four and six curries out of each one of these. So for me and Stu, for a usual night, when I'm usually making two curries, I'd use most of one of these tubs. Um, sometimes there's a little bit left, but then we like our curries quite sauce heavy. So we do tend to use quite a lot, but you can use little bits and then water it down, make it go further. It's a very brilliant sauce and it, you, you basically make all of the other curries in Dan Toon's excellent books with this base sauce. So this is the thing that you need to make all the other curries from and it's excellent and fairly simple to make. So what I'm going to do now is make a chicken gel frazy with some of this and show you how to do that. Now, as you can see here, I've got two different pots of spice. This with a J on it is gel frazy. And with an M on it, this is a madras that I'm going to make for stew with some salmon later. Normally, I would actually cook both curries at the same time, but I, it takes a lot of concentration and I can't do filming and two curries at the same time, I don't think. So today I'm just going to film making the chicken gel frazy. But I wanted to show you these two next to each other to show you what makes this sauce, this magic sauce that is the base for everything, into different curries and one of those things is the spice profile and the flavors of the different spices so you can see there's in that uh little dish there the colors are a bit different um this there's also different amounts so this one is basically uh mixed powders which i'll tell you about in a minute and chili this one has got mixed powders, chili, turmeric, cumin, and coriander in various proportions. So it's partly the various things that are in these little pots, which I always do the spices like this just because it makes it easier when you're cooking. But it's also the method and the various other things that go in whilst you're cooking that turn that sauce into a variety of different British Indian curries. Now the mixed powders is essential and I'll show you here, this is actually my mixed powders uh, blended myself and this is part of the reason that British Indian curries have a particular flavour profile. Um, this is a blend of basically all the various spices that you would get and there's particular quantities so I, I make a big batch of this every sort of six months or so probably. And mixed powders goes into pretty much everything in, in some quantity or other. So in there, there's cumin, coriander, paprika, turmeric, um, cumin, all sorts of great and good uh, spices and garam masala. So I blend my own garam masala and some of that goes in mixed powders. But this is like a base powder um, that goes into most of the curries. So... It's all in the Curry Guys books, which I've got the Curry Guys uh, other book there ready to make uh, the gel frazy. So I highly recommend Dan Toom's books. But uh, these are the secret things that go into making these British curries, which are excellent. So do yourself a favour and get his books if you're interested in British Indian cooking. OK, so what we're going to do now is make a chicken gel frazy. I've got all the ingredients here, apart from fresh coriander, which I forgot to get, which is a travesty because I love fresh coriander. But what I do have instead is some uh, gourmet garden fresh coriander paste, which it's not as good, but it does the job when you've forgotten to get any fresh coriander, which I did today. And because it's public holiday, I can't go out and get any. Anyway, other ingredients that we need. So here I've got half a red pepper thinly sliced half an onion thinly sliced and two bird eye chilies uh, thinly sliced into rings as well, ready to go in. And then here I've got 500 grams of diced chicken breast. You could put chicken thighs in, you could put lamb in, you could put just vegetables in. This is basically a sauce that you just put whatever uh, main ingredient in at the, whatever, at the same time and it will give you the same result. So it'll make just a really nice gel frazy. I've also got my spice blend that I was showing you. 
and garlic and ginger paste, which we're going to need some more of. And you, this recipe actually calls for tomato puree, but I'm going to use the rest of the tin of tomatoes that I opened to make the base sauce. And yeah, let's get cracking and get turn this into a curry. In here, I've got uh, two tablespoons of canola oil or rapeseed oil. And I'm just going to add to that. It's been heating for a minute, so it's, it's quite warm. And I'm just going to add the onion, the capsicum and the chilies and then give it a good stir and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so we've got the onion, the capsicum and the chilies in there sizzling away. Um, they're still quite, still quite um, firm. They're not really softened yet, but that's how you want it. And then I'm going to add in here a tablespoon of garlic and ginger paste and because I don't have fresh coriander stalks I'm going to just add about a tablespoon of coriander paste there as well and give that a stir. It pays to have all your ingredients chopped and prepared and ready because once you get cooking this is quite a fast and furious uh, method. That's partly why I'm not going to attempt to do two curries whilst filming today. So you can immediately smell the aroma. I wish you could smell my kitchen right now. It smells quite lovely. And now that they're all coated in the garlic and ginger and the coriander, I'm gonna tip in the spice masala blend. Masala is basically the, I think it's the Hindi word for mix, I think, of spices. So there's my masala blend. And that's just going to all go in there and give that a stir. Smells really good. And you basically just want to be able to smell it, making your kitchen all aromatic. This is the base of your curry. So... going to leave that sizzling for a minute. Now the next thing that's going to go in is the tomato puree. So just bear with me while I grab that. So four tablespoons. I've actually used chopped tomatoes instead of puree just because I had some open. You can be quite inventive like that. You can substitute things and as long as you've got something similar it will it'll work. So there's your base sauce basically let it all mix together and just sizzle there for a minute it needs to be sizzling because the pan needs to be really hot and that's just part of the method of cooking that you use with indian food and then i think the next thing to go in is the chicken okay next thing to go in is the base sauce so i've got my base sauce here I need 250 ml, but we're only going to put half of it in for now. So this is a 125 ml measure. And I know that that's about the amount I need. So in that goes. And then we just give that a stir. Starting to look and feel like a curry already. Okay, this has just been bubbling away here. So the next thing to go in is the chicken or whatever you're using, lamb, uh, chicken thighs, vegetables, whatever. And that's just all gonna go in there. And then we're just gonna coat that in the base as it exists at the moment, which there isn't a lot of sauce, but we're gonna add to that in a second. So you just wanna make sure all of your protein or your whatever your main ingredient is is thoroughly coated and then we're going to add another cup of this base sauce and then we're going to give it a stir and we're going to just let it simmer and we're going to let the chicken 
cooked in this sauce. And basically, that's the crux of your gel frazy right there. Save for some salt and bits of fenugreek, and I might add a bit more water just because I like more sauce. But that's the crux of it. So, I'm going to put the lid on and leave it for about 10 minutes so that the chicken will cook in the sauce, and there you go. Okay, so while that curry's cooking, uh, let's talk about Soundgarden, super unknown. Um, pretty seminal album for me, one that um, I remember very distinctly. I remember my journey to it and how I, how I learned about it, which uh, one of my friends at the time, it came out in 1994, which was the year that I was in year 11 or year, the fifth year of, of high school doing my main exams, it was my final year. Um, well into, I was well into grunge and Nirvana and all of that at that time, but there was two singles that were on, in high rotation on MTV that year and they were uh, Spoon Man and uh, Black Hole Sun. Now if you haven't seen the video for Black Hole Sun, check it out, it's just a piece of art, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, and very interesting, stands the test of time, lots of bright colours and surreal imagery and oddness abounds, but it really sticks in your mind. And one of my friends, Chris Hart, hi Chris, if you're watching, uh, he lent me a copy of this on this album on tape, which was how we listened to things back then. Um, and I loved it, really, really loved it. There were the two songs that really stood out, and I think they also won Grammy Awards, were Spoon Man and uh, Black Hole Sun. Um, and they were also, there were also a couple of other, of other tracks on there that were big. I think Fell on Black Days was, was another one that did really well. Um, but it, on the whole, this album was just, it, it, it kind of busted them into the mainstream when, I think it was their fourth album. It wasn't, it wasn't their debut, it was their fourth. They were quite established by the time this album came out. But the strength of the writing on it and those songs um, really made an impact with the public. And I think just the timing that 1994, it was also the year that Kurt Cobain passed away, but it was like there was a huge amount of, of activity in the, in the grunge scene at that time. And this album fitted in really well with all of that. Um, Chris Cornell, the lead singer, sadly passed away in 2017 by, by suicide. So he, he's a yet another member of the, of the fraternity uh, around the grunge scene of front men that just didn't uh didn't survive or are not not still with us which is really sad um he was really good friends with chester bennington from uh linkin park and i know there was a that it was sad that they both took their own lives um within the space of a year i believe it's very very sad but um this is their legacy and this album still you know it, it broke records it went platinum it sold a lot it won them grammy awards it won them a lot of recognition and a lot of fans um and I think for what it was worth, Chris Cornell was often voted one of the best front, man, front men. Uh, he was in the top, I think, 100 best lead singers of all time uh, and, and different rankings. His voice is really distinct. Um, and if you've listened to this album, you, you would, you'd know what I'm on about. If you're a Soundgarden fan, you'd know what, what I'm on about. I believe that, that Chris Cornell suffered with depression um, and, and that's what led him to take his own life. And obviously, if you're having issues, there's many people out there that can help you. And don't be alone. Call, call a helpline. Talk to someone. It's never worth taking your own life. Um, this album will, for me, remain one of those that I link in, implicitly with being a teenager, being into a grunge scene. Um, it's one that I recommend giving a listen to. And it's so... It's so kind of distinct. I mean, for me in particular, Spoon Man and that staccato style of delivery with the drumming and the bass line is just, you, you can't miss it. You can't mistake it for what it is. It's, it's so distinct and unique and so very Soundgarden. Uh, one of the great, one of the classics, one, one of those that, you know, it's up there, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, Hole, Soundgarden, they're, they're up there in that, in that, um, that class of the 90s that, that was the grunge scene. Anyway, I do recommend it. And if you're not familiar with Soundgarden, it's a good place to start. I was lucky enough to see them live a few times in the mid 90s, and they were always brilliant live. Um, but at this point, I don't know whether or not there's any plan to continue. And I don't really think they could without Chris Cornell. So it may not be a, an option, unfortunately, but they should be remembered for what they contributed to this scene. And this album in particular was a really great 
um, an interesting uh, listen with some absolutely superb musicianship on show. So check it out. Soundgarden, super unknown from 1994, is this week's album that we've investigated. Right, I'd better get on with that, Corey. Okay, you can see at this point the chicken is cooked through and this is pretty much ready. This is your finished jal frazee. But what I'm going to do, I've just added, so I've just seasoned it with some salt and I'm just going to add literally a pinch of um, garam masala. At this point, I would also, if I had any, be adding some uh, coriander, chopped coriander leaves, but I don't have any today, so I won't be adding that. And the coriander freaks amongst you that don't like it will be pleased with that, I'm sure. Anyway, that is your finished uh, jalfrezi. So I'm going to serve this with some rice. I'll show you what it looks like served in a little bit. But that's basically your finished curry. And here is my chicken jalfrezi, ready to eat, just with some basmati rice. Got some spare here that I'm going to pop in a tub and freeze. That is what the finished product looks like. Thanks for joining us on episode six of Grunge Kitchen. Really enjoyed today. It's one that I've been meaning to do for a while. Um, if you visited our house or you're good friends with us, then we've more than likely I've cooked that curry or some kind of curry from that book for you. Um, but anyway, in the main, I think it's really important that I credit Dan Toomes, the, cur the curry guy, for his influence on my British Indian cooking and my mom for sending those books to me as a gift. Um, and yeah, I mean, British Indian is a style of its own that I bloody love. It, it's all about where we're from in the UK. Um, and I'd encourage you to give it a go. If you're from the UK and you miss this kind of food like we do, we live in Australia and it's very hard to find that style of Indian food. It's so simple and making that base sauce is the key to it all. So don't be put off. You can make that base sauce in advance. You've got it, can keep it in the freezer and then just pull it out and you've got the, the crux of any kind of British Indian recipe is that base sauce. So anyway, give it a go. And then please like us, follow us. Here's all our, our social media and connect accounts across the bottom here. Please let us know your thoughts. Send photos of you doing the recipes. Like us on Instagram, follow us and let us know how you're doing. We're really enjoying this journey and I'm really hopeful in 2021 that we're going to do more. Um, so thank you for all the support. This has been a passion project for me in 2020 in what's been really a challenging year for everybody. But this is one of the things that fed my soul through the year. Right. I'm going to say Happy New Year now because it's New Year's Eve in the next few days. And then the next video that I do will likely be in 2021. So I hope everybody's having a very awesome festive period and getting the rest and the respite that they need and that they deserve. And here's to more good music, good food and Grunge Kitchen in 2021. Thanks. Bye.